This episode is brought to you by Photo Plus, October 24th through 26th at the Javits Center in New York City. Register today at photoplusexpo.com and use the code TWIP to register for free. Hey folks, in this interview, I'm talking about how to unleash the creative version of you with my good friend, Mr. Mark Silber. This is Twitter. I'd like to say thank you to our sponsor for this episode, Photo Plus. What are you doing to make sure you're up to date with the latest trends, technologies, and techniques necessary to remain competitive in your marketplace? You'll get hands-on with the newest gear from leading brands and hear practical tips and tricks during sessions led by experts. And exhibitors host interactive education sessions directly in their booths right on the show floor. Plus, you'll network and connect with peers and creative leaders from around the world. World. So why not take a few days and invest in your craft and your business? Register today at photoplusexpo.com and use the code TWIP to register for free. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today I'm talking again with a friend of mine, Mr. Mark Silber. He's been on the show a couple times before, um, talking about various things photography related. Today we're going to focus things more on still on photography, but more on the creative side of photography. Hopefully it's all creative, but you know, there's a sliding scale in there. It could go from, you know, technological and geekery all the way to creative. So we're going to talk about how to unleash the creative side of you. And here to do that, like I said, is my good friend, Mr. Mark Silber to talk about that stuff. Mr. Silber, how are you doing today? <laughs> Frederick, I'm great, and I love being on your show. It's good to be back again. It is good to have you on. You always look so dapper and, and, and <laughs> you know, sort of focused. You got the hat. You got the, it's the, the, hat, the silver you. hair going on. It's all cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, we try to hide it with a hat, but it's going to sneak through anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's comes, like a snowdrift, right? It's just exactly. <laughs> can't, you can't quite hide it all the way. You can't corral a snowdrift. Well, cool, man. Let's talk about this stuff. So the, this is on the heels um, of a, a a new book that you have coming out. Tell me about the new book and what would the, the impetus of the book was. Well, you know, I so this is my third book. And um, I the two previous ones were just on photography. And I've been wanting to tackle the whole subject of creativity for a while because it's something I've been really looking at most of my adult life. I'm involved in a lot of different creative activities besides photography. I, you know, I do filmmaking and editing. I write. Uh, I've done all sorts of design work. And, you know, originally this book was titled The Art of Living. It's funny how these things happen. You, you pick a title, and I thought I wanted to write a book not just about, quote, creativity and being a creative – but how to add more creativity to your life in general. So that's really where this book began. And as I started unpacking it, I found there were some real common denominators, and that's what the book is about. Yeah. And, you know, you, you talk about that, how to, how to be more creative. And a lot of people think, well, yeah, you just, you know, you think of a shot and you go do it. But there's a, there's a certain level of analysis paralysis that comes in when you're a photographer. Oh, Right. Yeah. You got this bag. You know, I, I say this on the show a lot. You have this 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 camera bag sitting by the front door with, you know, three grand or more worth of gear in it. Or and more, it's just yeah. taunting you every day as it depreciates. Right. Yeah. So how, how do you sitting on the shelf? They're sitting on the shelf or even software sitting on your hard drive that you had to have. So you bought uh -huh. it and now you've launched it three times since you got. So how do you how do you get from. OK, I'm well equipped. I am Batman or Iron Man. And I've got all the gear I need to actually doing battle with creativity and telling a story creatively. How do you get there? OK, well, you led me right into the the beginning part of the book. I talk about the cycle of creativity and creativity does follow a natural cycle. This isn't something I just pulled out of my head one day. This is something I worked on for years and years talking to different people. Great. Uh, the, the beginning of the cycle and the kind of the core of it is visualization, which means getting your idea before you, you know, Ansel Adams said the whole key to a photograph is visualizing it first, but it turns out that's true with any creative process. 
it doesn't matter whether you're going to re you know design your your space which you have done by the way i, I want to compliment you on that oh on my on my awesome green screen thank you very much yeah that's, <laughs> that's okay that's a nice green screen <laughs> But, you know, whether you're redesigning your home or you're you're writing a blog post or you're taking a photograph or shooting a film, you have to visualize it first. You have to get the idea where are where am I going with this and what do I want to communicate from there? You've got to know your tools. You have to know your equipment. Bob Holmes, who I've shot a number of videos with, said, you know, don't let the camera get in the way of your photograph. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many photographers do that where they get so obsessed with the equipment that it gets in the way of their photography, their creative output? But how do you how do you get there, though? I mean, it's it's you know, it's easier. You know, maybe they need the book. Right. Because and so, you they know, you, we talk about this all the time. You know, be creative. Tell stories with your photography. Think outside the box. You know, do things yeah. that, that you're passionate. Shoot things that you're passionate about, et cetera, et cetera. But then, you know, it, this this happened to all of us. I'm sure it's happened to you as well. You know, you get your gear, you go out, maybe you're going to do a photo walk or you're in a new location. And it's, again, analysis paralysis or the, yeah. you know, I don't know if I should shoot that thing monster comes in, you know, like, right. how, yeah, how do you how do you beat that monster of, wow, I'm in San Francisco and I got my gear and I got to leave tomorrow morning. What do I shoot? OK, maybe I'll shoot nothing. And I'll come back next time. Like, how do you beat that? You know, there's a number of different tips for that. You know, one of them is create a shot list and the shot list can come from your own study of, of uh, inspiration that you get from others works. And I don't just mean photographers, Joey L you familiar with his work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, he drew his inspiration from uh, Rembrandt and Carvaccio. Same thing with Camille Seaman. You know, these guys dig into the work of, of the classical artists to get their inspiration. So I think one way to, to get to find that is definitely create a shot list. But before you even do that, go to the museums and, and pick out art that really resonates for you um, and do research, you know, find out what what's already been photographed a lot in wherever you're going. Don't don't take that same photograph. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it actually is important to know, like, it's really hard to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower that hasn't already been photographed. Right. Ten trillion times. Yep. I think I might have done that. You know, I, I took a camera, an angle that was unusual, and I tried to find something different than everybody else had done. But I had some inspiration for it. So... I'd say, you know, if you're headed to a location, you need to come back with the goods. Definitely think it through and create a shot list. Like in filmmaking, the first thing you do is you create a treatment when you're going to pitch the film. You got to you got to put down on paper on a couple of pages max what it is that you're planning on shooting. What's the story here? What's what's the what's the crucial line that we're going to follow here in the arc? And I think the same thing is true with still photography and it's true with any art form, like so in writing if, a book. If, if someone's yeah. going out, if someone's going out, you know, and using the photo walk example, or even if they're in their own backyard, does that, does that creating the story arc or the treatment idea filter down to every shot they take or, or should no, sometimes I, it just be like, you know, I'm just going to grab my camera and go out. If I see something that strikes me, I'll, I'll snap it. Or should they always have sort of a destination in mind before they start taking photos? Chance favors the prepared mind. There you go. Whereas, right? So yeah. if I was a Boy Scout, so be prepared. Right? Be prepared, right? <laughs> yeah. And that was Ansel's thing. Chance favors the prepared photographer. It actually comes from Louis Pasteur. But, you know, here's the way I see it working. A shot list is going to give you a framework, but then you've got to be prepared for the things that you had no idea were going to happen. But if one goes out completely unprepared, yeah, maybe you'll come back with it, but maybe you won't. So I, I would I would favor the idea of um, some sort of an outline yeah. and work from that as a framework, but be ready for those things you absolutely had no idea were going to happen. How do you, how do you feel about the idea of so yeah work for an out from an outline for sure but yeah. the the idea of personal projects so should that outline 
you know, I'm visualizing an outline in my head or a mind map or something. But should that manifest as, okay, uh, here's a project. I want to photograph, you know, say you're a photojournalist. I want to photograph the homelessness situation in San Francisco. And then right. underneath that, you have this sort of subtopics that you need to cover that that will fill in that project. Is that a, is right. that a smart way to do it? I think so. I mean, that's that's the overall theme of the project is you're you're shooting this the homeless scene. Mm -hmm. And then maybe underneath it, you've got interaction with, uh, you know, homeless people between the, sh the shopkeepers in the area, let's just say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you've got some ideas in your mind so that you know what to look for. And the, the again, I think if you have some of those already visualized ahead of time, you're more, much more likely to find them. Yeah. But hopefully you'll find, you'll come across things that you didn't find. You know, a good advice for a wedding photographer is you've got to work with a shot list because otherwise you're going to miss Aunt Mamie dancing, you know, with uh, with Grandfather Bill. And it's going to upset everybody because nobody got any pictures of Aunt Mamie. But you got to have that on your shot list. Every single relative, you know, make sure you capture them. But then you've got all those extemporaneous shots that nobody had any idea was going to happen. You know, the the little bouquet in the hand of the two-year-old yeah and, and but you but by covering both of them and by having some sort of framework i think you're going to have a lot better chance at coming away with what you want do you so that all falls that all falls within visualization do you remember you remember uh you you spent time in the dark room before right oh so, yeah so yeah. do you remember the concept of the ring around you where where you print you know your your you think you got the exposure right, and then you do a bunch oh, of different exposures and around, sure. and one of those then becomes the hero. Then you do until you nail it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So I use that when I when I give talks and talk to people. I I use that example as just exactly kind of what you said. You know, you you have the your target shot list or the shots that you absolutely positively must get, whether the client you know is expecting them or you're expecting them of yourself, or you know you're going to the Eiffel Tower there's that iconic shot that yeah. you want to have, you know, of the Eiffel Tower. But then you do the ring around, you play around the edge of Absolutely. it and do crazy ones, oh, right? Totally. I mean, especially in the digital age. I mean, back in the darkroom days, you know, we had to come back with those rolls of film and and deal with them. Yeah. But with digital, hey, absolutely, totally overshoot and, and ring around is a good idea. Yeah. You know, one of the things I did, Frederick, with this book is I got to interview um, 11 or 12 really super creative people, including Chris Burkhardt, who I had on my show, boy, you know, back in 2009, before he had really become what he is today, you know, the sensation on Instagram. And yeah. he's a sensation all around. But it was interesting to have him open up to me about the challenges that he's had to deal with as a as a creative and as a photographer you know a, a lot so much of it has to do with your own mental equipment and making sure that you're moving you kind of touched upon it but moving that that negativity out of your way so that you can stay focused on on the positive right yeah which is hard i mean because you know as as photographers life life gets in the way you're right or life happens life gets in the way yeah life happens life gets in the way and you know it's interesting is it you know i've i've spoken to hundreds of people over the years you know for twip and um uh, we you know i've even done some some shows on mental illness and how people you know deal use photography to help deal with that i've done shows sure. with people that use photography to deal with post postpartum depression, you know, those sorts of things. And the common denominator, I think, in all those types of shows that I do is that, you know, people look at um, the you can't you can't separate the art from the artist. Right. Or right. the things that are happening to you or around you from you. You know, it's That's like, right. you know, I, I use kind of a crass a, a crass uh, analogy of like you can't if you're in a hot tub and someone pees in it on the other side <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> you can't That's really an keep you can't really keep yourself away from it it's gonna life is gonna get you no matter what so 
So, you know, so why not channel that, you know? In, why not channel it and yeah. use it? You know, it's interesting because I, I put that in the book. It's if you go through life kind of hoping, ah, you know, I hope that person doesn't say this and infect me or whatever. Instead of that, how about looking at um, life being an opportunity to, to find creative material? Mm hmm. And uh, Leonardo da Vinci had interesting, an interesting piece of advice. He said, go out, walk around with a notebook, sketchbook, and watch people. Watch them in various different emotions, <clears throat> in different situations, and really pay attention to how they use their hands and their facial expressions and how they interact. So his advice was really anything you run into becomes uh, content. Yeah. for your creativity, which yeah. is actually a way of life that you can adjust and and deal with these situations that we're facing all the time. Well, what do you say to the people that are say that will say, you know what, I watch these these awesome YouTubers and Instagram personalities, you know, taking shots of their fabulous lives and, you know, if the Casey Neistat's on YouTube that, you know, has an amazing life every single day somehow, you know, but my life may consist of, you know, walking to Starbucks and then going to check my, check my mailbox at the UPS store and then back home to, you know, it's not exciting like those other people. So what do you, what do you say to, to the folks that are that are saying, you know, hey, I want to I want to be creative and I want to tell, tell the story of my life. But my life just ain't that interesting and nobody wants to hear about it. How do how do they how do they get creative when they feel like they have a mundane sort of life going on? Well, I think it all is in the in the the vision of the the creator because take a look at Peter McKinnon. I saw one of his episodes was about taking his snowmobile in and selling it. Yeah. I, I mean, what what's exciting about that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. But somehow, somehow he made an episode out of it. It And Casey, before he became Casey, you know, with with 12 million subscribers, you know, he had to put it together. He had to figure out what was going to work. So I think, you know, in every case with creativity, what you see uh, on on screen had to be put there. That didn't just fall out of the sky, you know, as a perfectly packaged story. Yeah. We all have to create the story and i hate to sound like you know redundant but it does come back to your vision and part of it is your vision of yourself and yeah. i have to do that you know i have to kind of repackage what would make an interesting series of shows and i'm just about to launch that on youtube mm -hmm. but you know i'm going to hope hope that it resonates maybe it won't maybe i'll get 12 views and and i hope you're one of them yeah but, yeah i will be one of them but that's the yeah. thing you you hit on you hit on a a, a really important piece of this right and that's uh, you know for lack of a better word tenacity you're right yeah. so the the common trait that i've seen again you know pulling from the hundreds of interviews i've done the common and including you you know the common trait that i've seen is most successful people that i know don't give up they that's right they that fail so you know they yeah i hate to use the, the the silicon valley term fail forward right but they yeah, fail forward yeah they fail um and the it's interesting it's 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 almost like how come everyone doesn't know this but the successful people fail and then they learn from the failure dust themselves off you know and get up and try again even you know all totally. the way down from steve jobs to elon musk and all those guys all the way down to joe blow right they Absolutely. fail. Yeah, they fail and they keep going. The unsuccessful people fail and say, well, you know, I guess that wasn't for me. Let me try something different and, yeah, I mean, and do Steve something Jobs completely is, different and start at ground zero again instead of Steve starting Jobs. at I've learned some stuff. Let me move on. You you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, you know, what's Michael Jordan's famous quote about how many shots he's missed? He's he's let his team down so many times and missed so many shots. But look at yeah. him. At the end of the day, he kept kept getting up and shooting again. Exactly. What if what if Steve Jobs had you know he, when he got fired from Apple, just said, "Well, I, you know, I've got enough money here to live on. I'm going to go to Mendocino and and you know check out." But yeah. he didn't. No. So you you do have to keep showing up. You do have to keep coming back. And you and I are 
boy, we're testaments to this. Frederick, 10 years ago, <laughs> we, we were doing this. You know, we keep showing up. And, and I think that's, that's a, a terrifically important point is the tenacity in terms of being creative. You know, it's There's funny no because it, it's because we get conflicting messages, right? Because um, we'll get the message of, you know, which is this is an incorrect quote. Einstein never said this, but they'll say, you know, the de Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different yeah, that results. Wasn't him. Right. That wasn't Einstein. But people, but but even the premise of that quote is incorrect because right. doing something over and over again and expecting different results you know, I think that's that's tenacity, right? That is <laughs> so tenacity. It's not learning. Insanity. It's doing something over and over again and not learning is that's insane. Right. But if you do something over and over again and you learn something every single time and improve your process, that's called progress, I think. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely agreed. And I think that's the whole thing about being a creative is you you are on a quest you know, you're not going to be satisfied in, in you, where you, you've done it all. You know, you created the ideal book or photograph or whatever. You're always moving to that next level. Yeah. And and that's the other point. You know, it's like where your where your purpose is, where are you going? And creativity to me is just such an important part of my life. And I find that, you know, one of the things I found, Frederick, in, in kind of interviewing people was that I found a lot of a lot of people when I was telling them what I was doing, the book I was writing, they said, oh, I'm not a creative person. And, and that included somebody, I'm not going to mention their name, but somebody who's written 14 or 15 books that is, I consider very highly creative. But because it wasn't creative in the sense of, you know, being a professional photographer or a filmmaker or some kind of designated creative activity, they didn't consider themselves creative. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody who designs a beautiful home or is a, a very creative entrepreneur and makes a workspace that, that people want to participate in, those are very creative people. Yeah. That's a, just a different way of showing your creativity. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Here, here's the last last one I want to throw at you. Um, All right. You know, you talk we, we've been talking about vision and creativity and getting out there and, you know, and repetition and tenacity and all that stuff. But what what about how do you define your own personal vision or be creative while, you know, they say nothing new is created under the sun. Right. So how do you how That's do I BS. get? Yeah. Ooh, but, right. Uh, how do I get inspired by Robert Mablethorpe or somebody, you know, like, sure. oh, and, and then not have his art affect mine and become a plagiarist? You know, how do how do I keep my stuff uniquely Frederick or uniquely Mark? You know, how does that happen? Well, I think we're listen, first of all, a huge part of the creative process is looking at others art. It's just an enormous part. And that could be anywhere from a film to a song. I mean, I look at Lady Gaga and listen to her sing, you know, on a Star is Born. And mm -hmm. it just inspires me. I, I, I couldn't sing. I'm not talking about being a singer. I'm just talking about as an artist who put herself out there. Uh, or Freddie Mercury, you know, his ability to engage an audience. That's inspiring. Now, mm -hmm. how could you... Uh, how could each one of us maybe take something of that and use it in our own art? Yeah, this is this is what we do. We're co we're collecting a visual library or a mental library of these examples of really great art, whether it's sculpture or writing or music or whatever. And that's something I cover thoroughly in the book, like all these different sources of inspiration that you can have. And it doesn't mean you're going to plagiarize it at all. You're using it as a springboard because guaranteed every one of those artists had people they looked up to and yeah. watched and listened. You know, it's, it's an ongoing human characteristic to look at what was successful and then build on that. That's fascinating. No you know what, you know, what's fascinating about that is, um, uh, what you describe is basically how artificial intelligence works, you know, <laughs> so or neural networks. You yeah. know, I was watching this thing with Elon Musk. They were talking about how they train their cars to drive on the road. And they were saying they basically 
put them out there and put them in different situations and they learn. And then that goes into the cloud and all the other cars now know that when yeah. you encounter this kind of situation, do this. Right. And you're talking about the same thing. And like with your creative brain, you're assume you're you're basically building a catalog of different things that you can draw from so that you can then be creative from. So we're building our own neural network inside our neurons. Well, right. And we're the guys that, that, you know, spiritually, you know, it's interesting. We have no limits. We have that ability to have infinite capacity. I mean, this is my belief. Mm -hmm. And you, you talk to somebody like Bambi Cantrell, you know, fantastic portrait photographer. You know what she says? Here she, here she is. You know, she's obviously understands her camera and she understands lighting and she understands all the component parts. But she said what she's trying to do is capture the spirit of the person. Yeah. So, so that's having to use all those tools to find the essence of the person and show them in, in a digital photograph. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. Well, well tell me, yeah. tell me about the, before we sign off here, tell me about the, the book when it's, what's the date for release? Is it out already? Can people go buy it? Where can they buy it? All that good stuff. Okay, good. Well, uh, it's going to be released in July, but they can buy it now, pre-order it. Please do that because I'll tell you what, if you go to my website, silverstudios.com, and I'm sure you'll have that yeah. written out yeah. so we don't have to worry about spelling it out. Go to silverstudios.com and look for the Create Book. If you pre-order it on Amazon or anywhere you pre-order it, you can go to Barnes & Noble, whatever, come back and you'll get a little download, a, uh, a pre-order bonus. And the download isn't in the book. It's a quick start guide of the things that I put in the book, which is kind of handy. No, fantastic. Not bad. A quick start guide for creativity. It's true. There you go. We could all use a little bit of that. <laughs> Exactly. So it's coming out in July, but pre-order it now. You'll get a you'll get a copy as soon as it uh, launches, and you'll get the um, you know the the uh, pre-order bonus, and and you'll be helping out an author. It's a good deed. I love it. I love it, man. Well, congratulations on this is your third book, right? It's actually my fourth. This is the fourth I an, book. I have oh. another one. Yeah, I have wow. another, another one on video production. I love it. I love it. Well, congratulations. Four books in the queue or in the can. Uh, yeah, what's, the what's the fifth book going to be on? Yeah, actually, here it is. It's funny. This is <laughs> this is at least the working title uh, called Forever Young. How about that? Oh, look at that. I got that in Mexico. And the book is uh, it's a bunch of stories. It's it's, it's like a photo essay collection. And uh, I'm about two thirds of the way through it already. So. That's going to be interesting. It's sort of like if you imagine um, On the Road and a few other books kind of rolled out in, in terms of stories, my own stories growing up in the Bay Area, going to the Fillmore Auditorium when I was 14 years old and nice. going on backpacking trips and things that uh, not every everybody gets to experience. I'm sort of rolling those out with photographs and uh, various different little pieces of history about the Bay Area and growing up in this California climate that we have. I love it. So well, I'm, put me yeah. on the list for that one, too. I want, I want You'll to get it. We'll be talking about that one as well. Hey, hey, why not? Why not? Cool. All right, sir. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for coming on again. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Frederick. Always a pleasure. This episode is brought to you by Photo Plus, October 24th through 26th at the Javits Center in New York City. Register today at photoplusexpo.com and use the code TWIP to register for free. This is TWIP.